Cleopatra the Seventh was the last active pharaoh of ancient Egypt, ruling from 51 BC to 30 BC. She led a prosperous reign over the nation until its last breath at the hands of the Roman Empire. But who was she, and what was her legacy? Cleopatra the Seventh was born in 70 or 69 BC in Alexandria. The king Ptolemy. You, the twelfth, and Cleopatra, uh, the fifth, or the sixth. I know nothing's ever certain with the Ptolemies. She was part of the Ptolemaic dynasty, a Greek Macedonian family that traces its roots to Ptolemy. Ptolemy was a general of Alexander the Great while he was destroying the Persian Empire. In 305, or 304 BC, Ptolemy became the pharaoh of Egypt after the partition of the Macedonian Empire between Cassander, Seleucus, Lysimachus, and Ptolemy himself, and thus his lineage continued to Cleopatra. According to Plutarch, she went through the trouble of learning Egyptian and styled herself as the living Isis. When she was 18 years old, her father, Ptolemy, decided to die. So, she ascended to the throne to psych her 10-year-old brother, Ptolemy, the 13th, was against her, so she had to flee to Syria in 49 AD. In Syria, Cleopatra raised an army and then started a civil war with her brother the following year, where they duked it out in Pelusium. Meanwhile, Roman general Pompey is murdered by Ptolemy, and then Ptolemy invites Pompey's rival in, Julius Caesar. Cleopatra sought Caesar's support to help defeat her brother, since she wanted to keep the throne. Now here's the deal. Caesar had been chasing Pompeii around the Mediterranean, and him suddenly being killed by this kid made him really angry that he stole his kill, so he was more than happy to do that. So, Caesar helped, def helped against Ptolemy and defeated him. So, then, the two became lovers, and had a child called Ptolemy Caesar, also known as Caesarian. Julius Caesar stayed in Egypt for about another year, and then returned home, where... He, after Julius Caesar crushed the last of the Pompeian resistance, Cleopatra went to Italy, Italia once, and Julius Caesar even built a statue of her in the Temple of Venus Genetrix, which many people thought as scandalous. Her reign could be described as being of stability and economic prosperity, unlike many of her predecessors. Cleopatra was in Rome when Julius Caesar was assassinated in 44 BC via stabbing, Julius Caesar style. The interesting fact about it is that uh, even though 60 senators came to Julius Caesar's assassination, he only got 23 stab wounds. Like, come on guys, teamwork. You can't just let a few people do all the work.
You gotta spread it evenly. Uh. Soon after defeating Brutus and Cassius' forces in the Battle of Philippi, you know, those guys who killed Julius Caesar, she met Mark Anthony in Tarsus in the Anatolian Peninsula, which is, which is at the time part of the Roman Empire. According to Plutarch, and later dramatized by Shakespeare, Cleopatra came to Mark Antony in an elaborate ship dressed in the robes of Isis, an Egyptian god. Soon, a romance formed between them and then an alliance to help defend the eastern provinces of the Roman Empire. Soon, Cleopatra and Mark Antony plotted to remove her younger half-sister, Arsinoe. In 40 BC, Cleopatra gave birth to two twins with Mark Antony, Alexander Helios and Cleopatra Selene. In 37 BC, Mark Antony met with Cleopatra to gain funds for the long-delayed campaign on the Parthian Empire. In exchange, he agreed to cede the lands of Cyprus, Crete, Cyrene, Jericho, and large portions of Syria and Phoenicia. Uh, they also had another child called Ptolemy Philadelphus. In the following year, uh, there were rumors that uh, they were married. But this is unlikely, considering the fact that he was already married to Octavia. Antony, despite losing in Parthia, decided to celebrate anyway and gave his kids lands. Caesarion was declared king of kings. Alexander Helios was given Armenia and the lands beyond the Euphrates. Ptolemy Philadelphus was given lands west of it. And Cleopatra. Aline was given in Cyrene. This event was known as the Donations of Alexandria, which happened in 34 ABC. Octavian did not like this, and he thought that Mark Antony would abandon Rome for Cleopatra. And in late 32 BC, the Roman Senate stripped Antony of his titles, and Octavian officially declared war on Cleopatra and Egypt. This was also the year when they actually got married, Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Finally. Octavian defeated Cleopatra's and Mark Antony's forces in the Battle of Actium and Epirus and then advanced to Alexandria. Antony heard rumors that Cleopatra deleted herself, so he fell on the sword and pressed the delete button just as the ru rumors had been debunked. Cleopatra's lover was now dead. After meeting the victorious Octavian and burying her lover Mark Antony, she deleted herself, too. How she did that is still a mystery. But writers like Plutarch and later Shakespeare advanced the theory that she was bitten by an asp. Which is probably not true. Cleopatra died in 30 BC. She was buried with her lover Mark Antony in the tomb of Antony and Cleopatra, near Alexandria, which to this day hasn't been excavated yet. There, the two lovers can stay with each other for the rest of eternity. For a long time, the only way we could see Cleopatra's appearance was through the media, which is like movies and books and stuff. And she was betray betrayed as this beautiful woman. This was until 
over a decade ago when a coin was found with her portrait of it. As the coin says, she wasn't the most beautiful woman ever. The coin was a silver denarius and dates back to 32 BC. In this coin, she is portrayed with a shallow forehead, pointed nose, narrow lips, and a slack chin. This changed how we saw Cleopatra forever since. Historians now think that Cleopatra seduced Caesar and Antony, not by her looks, but with her wit and charisma. To this day, she has become the most infamous pharaoh of ancient Egypt, among the ranks of Tutankhamun. There is a lot of media about her, from Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra in 1607, to Cleopatra in 1963, and became an icon of strong female rulers. Unlike her predecessors, who just used the throne as an excuse to party, and didn't even bother to learn the native language, she actually worked to make Egypt great. Anne learnt a lot, she knew several languages, managed her country efficiently, addressed issues, and overall was actually competent. She cared for Egypt, and that's why Cleopatra was one of the greatest e leaders of not just Egypt, but the ancient world itself. So this is my, my documentary on ancient Egypt, so if you liked it, please like and subscribe, and sh share this video with all of your friends. And also, uh, click the notification bell, so you don't miss a, a single video I upload. This is LaFinci signing out. Bye!